Grace and peace to you. Good morning and welcome. Welcome to the Congregational Church of Middlebury, Vermont, United Church of Christ, where we gather around these welcoming words every week. No matter who you are, no matter where you are on this journey, you are welcome here. I want to offer sincere thanks to Andy Lloyd for managing the technological side of things this morning. I want to thank Mary Naj Benson for putting together a really lovely slideshow that you will see in a little while. I also want to lift up two announcements. The first is that there will be a Teze worship service online at four o'clock today. And Pastor Elizabeth will be offering a multi-part Bible study on the Gospel of Matthew on the Wednesdays of May. Information about both of those things were uh, in a church-wide email that went out recently, so if you're interested, please participate. I miss you all. I love you all. Let us worship God. to worship. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with singing. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who live in it. 
Let the waters clap their hands. Let the hills sing together for joy. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. The intention of confession is not perpetual guilt, but truth-telling. As individuals and as a community of faith, we take time to look clearly and closely at our lives. Where we have lost our way, we ask for the forgiveness we need and the courage to change. Let us pray. Gracious God, we celebrate the goodness of your creation and we confess our failure to care for it. You place us in the garden and equip us to till and keep it. Where we have misused our power to degrade earth's bounty, forgive us. Where we have taken for granted nature's beauty and majesty, have mercy on us where we have become indifferent to the creatures with whom we share this planet, open wide our hearts and minds. God, we have sinned and we are sorry. By your grace, lead us on right paths so that all living things will know the joy of abundant life. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
God is sheer mercy and grace. Not easily angered, the Lord is rich in love. God doesn't treat us as our sins deserve, nor pay us back in full for our wrongs. As high as heaven is over the earth, so strong is the love of God. By the grace of God, we are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. children, I'd love to invite all of you forward to your computer screens or your TV screens for a children's message this morning. 
You may know that this week on Wednesday, we celebrated the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. Earth Day is when we all get to celebrate the beauty of God's creation outdoors. So I'm wondering if you know what the inside of our church building where we worship is called. Well, it's called a sanctuary. Have you heard of that word? Sanctuary, it's kind of a big word, but it means uh, a sacred place or holy or very special place. And what makes that type of space, our sa church sanctuary special? Well, I think a lot of things make it special, but I think what really makes it special is the people that gather inside of that place to worship. What do we do there? Well, we sing hymns, we greet each other, we um, pray, we hear the Bible read out loud. All of those things is what makes that sanctuary, that place really holy. We also take care of that place. We make sure that it's clean. We um, take care of it by respecting the things inside of it because it's a special place. And you know what? I like to consider the outside, the world, God's earth as God's sanctuary, as a really special place that God lives. And one of the ways that I like to talk to God and be with God in God's sanctuary is sitting somewhere by myself and listening, listening to the trees, smelling the air, and looking up sometimes and looking around and that feeling that you get when you're outside maybe by yourself or with somebody else that feeling that you get where you say oh wow that is so beautiful i believe that is god being with you and so here i am outside in god's sanctuary enjoying god's creation and letting god speak to me in this moment and just like we take care of our church sanctuary, we are also um, called to take care of God's sanctuary. So how do we take care of God's sanctuary? Well, we treat it with respect, we enjoy it, and we spend time with the people we love in it. And so that's what I hope on this um, 50th anniversary of Earth Day, you can do too. So will you please pray with me? Dear God, we give you thanks for the beauty of your creation. Thank you for being with us in our church sanctuary and also in your sanctuary outside in the world. Thank you for the rustling trees and the wind and the mountains and the rain. Thank you for creating everything good. In your name we pray. Amen. Good morning. This morning's scripture reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, verses 1 to 19. Meanwhile, Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless because they heard the voice but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. He answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, 
and at the house of Judas look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment he is praying, and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on your way here, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Let's imagine for a moment that you get a year's wage in one lump sum on January 1st. And let's say you do have a budget, but you don't pay it much mind. Let's say your appetite for yes often overrides your ability to say no. And let's say all of the money for the whole year runs out before the goldenrod blooms at summer's end. And let's say the same thing happens the following year and the year after that. And the year after that, I think we can agree that this would be no way to run a church or a profitable business or a household. But ecologically speaking, that is how we are living on earth. This kind of overspending can be measured. In fact, we can figure out the date when our demand for natural resources in a given year exceeds what our planet can regenerate in that year. It's called Earth Overshoot Day. In 1970, Earth Overshoot Day was December 29th. Not bad. In 1980, it was November 4th. In 1990, it was October 11th. In 2000, it was September 23rd. In 2010, August 7th. And last year, July 29th. And no, we can't go blaming China for this one either. Right now, if all the countries in the world had the same ecological footprint as the United States, humans would exhaust a whole year's worth of natural resources by March 14th. So just as we have had to learn to stay at home in recent weeks, we are going to need to learn to live within the regenerative capacity of the planet's ecosystem. That's a fact. And despite the opinions of some, facts still matter. Scientific models do too. And the scientific evidence that our climate is changing at an unsustainable rate is unequivocal. 20 of the warmest years on record have occurred in the last 22 years. The rate of Antarctica ice mass loss has tripled in the 10 years I've been your pastor. 
You've heard stats like these. You know the story. What I didn't know until last year was how long this story has been out there. In 1896, a Nobel-winning chemist from Sweden concluded, evaporating our coal mines into the air would eventually raise the Earth's temperature by five or six degrees Celsius. That prediction was spot on. But the chemist also thought it would take 3,000 years to double the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And with the burning of fossil fuels, we have managed to do that in 125 years. I think it matters a great deal that we all know what's going on on Earth. But awareness is not enough. What we need is conversion, an ecological conversion. It is our business as Christians to be evidence of the living Christ. And in a time of climate change, that has to do with changing how we live in and for the world. It has to do with changing attitudes, behaviors, lifestyles for the good of all life. It has to do with a change of heart. I do think that beauty can move us in that direction. The kinds of beauty that can make us quiet inside, like the ocean can, like the Adirondack sunsets can. When you encounter beauty, beauty in the natural world, the heart of you can begin to change. But ecological conversion is much more than taking in the sights and sounds and smells of a lovely spring day in the Champlain Valley. It's about showing gratitude for the gift of God's creation by caring for it. It's about honoring the interconnectedness of life on earth by decentering ourselves and making space for all life to flourish now and in the future. It's about loving God and neighbor by protecting and restoring the environment for the sake of all species in the web of life. It's about backing off of fossil fuels for the sake of our poorest neighbors in the world who are already paying with their lives for our ecological spending spree. The question is not, can we do this? The past several weeks have made it clear that we can do a lot more than we thought possible. We can care more for more people. We can change our attitudes, behaviors, lifestyles. And we can work together in really, really powerful ways. That's good news. That's good news because we are, all of us, on the road to Damascus this morning. And we are, all of us, right now, within earshot of the living Christ, who is calling out to you and to me on behalf of God's creation. Why do you persecute me? He says. Why do you roll back the Clean Water Act? Why do you insist on business as usual when business as usual means 200 million climate change refugees in the next 30 years? Why do you live like you own the place? Like your needs are greater than the needs of those who will come after you. Why do you persecute me? 
Those questions are for each of us to answer. Because each of us is called to be a protector of God's handiwork. This is not optional. This is what it means to live your life like a thank you note to the God of all creation. This is what it means to live your life as one strand on a glorious and luminous web. This is what it means to live like love is your organizing principle. Love for God, love for your neighbor, humans and creatures alike. Today, the living Christ is calling, calling us to show the world what it looks like when a private change of heart becomes a public witness, a clear and bold and tireless witness to the holy and human work of tilling and keeping the garden. This garden, this sacred, life-giving garden, which is our common home, Amen.
Now let us continue our prayer. Creator and creating God, on this 50th anniversary of Earth Day, we praise you for your beautiful, perfect creation. You made this earth out of chaos, breathing out your creating breath into the universe. You hung the moon and stars and sun in the sky. You made mountains and rivers and every crawling thing. Everything you made was good, very good. As most humans on this planet work to stay indoors during these uncertain times, we know your divine melodies fill the world still. Every creature has a song. The wolf cries at night. The songbird trills in the morning. You give voice to crickets and frogs, to geese and chickens, to barking dog and neighing horses, to the sweet song of the lark. Today, we thank you for filling the earth with good things, that we might live in abundance with all of creation. As the trees clap their hands in praise and the winds echo a rich refrain, we give thanks today for the joys in our community. We are grateful for the safe arrival of Jim and Louise Wright's granddaughter, Gia Michaela, who was born on April 21st for the adoption anniversary of Lois and Holly's daughter, Kimberly, 32 years ago this week. For the birthday of Russell Carpenter this past Thursday, who would have been 79. We remember him and miss him every day. And God, we are thankful for all the ways that we can enjoy your creation during this time of social isolation. For early morning sunrises and afternoon hikes, for long walks on the TAM, and spring gardening. We thank you for all the joy in this world. And even as we thank you for these things, we know, Holy One, that all is not well with the earth. We mourn with you the death of forests, fruitful lands that have become deserts, wild animals left without grass, plants, insects, birds, and animals threatened with extinction, lands ravaged by war, people left homeless. The earth cries out, and we confess our part in threatening your creation. Help us to be converted into people who live in harmony with all creatures. In God, we know that all is not well with our human communities. In this time of global pandemic and physical isolation, our neighbors, have become un unemployed. Some have fallen ill. Others suffer from loneliness, and most of us are anxious. Today, we pray for those serving in the medical field, for grocery store workers, mail deliverers, truck drivers. We pray for those with mental illness or addiction, for those whose homes are not safe, for those without adequate health insurance. God, be with all parents everywhere as they seek to keep their children safe. Today, we pray for Julie's dad, Paul, whose health is declining, and for her mom who cares for him. Be with all caregivers during this time and help them to feel your care for them, Holy One. We too now pray for all the things that weigh heavy on our hearts this morning which we speak aloud or in the silence of our own hearts. Creating one we trust that you send your spirit to intercede for us with sighs too deep for words. Thank you for hearing us, loving us, abiding with us in these days and all our days. We now join together with one voice with Christians everywhere, praying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God bless you and keep you. God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with kindness and grant you peace. Let us serve God and neighbor with joy in our hearts. Peace be with you, friends. Grace and peace be with you. Amen. Thank you.